afternoon, XRP Future Millionaire here, and this is a really vital um, update. We're gonna go through the ripple price analysis, XRP lost critical support, where is the next level to watch? And then we also need to go through the Bitcoin USD pressured below 50,000. Again, the Sally Host technical analysis, December 30th, 2021. A little bit ahead of us, because we're only in the 20, you know, so. Um, but we really need to go over this. Make sure to hit that like button. This is critical technical analysis we're gonna go over. I want to make sure you hit that like button so we can get as many people as possible to watch us. And if you've got time after while this is playing, share this far and wide on social media. Make sure to help me get the name out there because we need more people to see this trusted technical analysis and news of what's actually going on. Something that will actually help you. So enjoy. <laughs> Okay, guys, so let's get back to this. I just want to have that on in the background. I like to have a little bit of music. Not loud, but so first thing first, let's start out with the Bitcoin US. You know what? No, no, no. Let's start out with XRP. I want to do this first. We'll go over this. We'll go over the XRP chart. Then we'll read the Bitcoin. So we got Ripple price analysis. XRP lost critical support. Where is the next level to watch? XRP is approaching a key support level after losing most of the gains from last week. And this came out today at 1,643 hours. December 29th. Key support levels 0.75. Key resistance 89 cents and one dollar. XRP broke below the critical level at 89 cents on Tuesday when most of the crypto market took a downturn. As Bitcoin plunged below 50k, now the key level 89 cents has immediately turned into key resistance as we've witnessed. On the other hand, the next support is it lies at 875 cents. As long as the overall market sentiment remains bearish, XRP is likely to retest this key support level. Technical indicators, trading volume. This correction has been a seen a decreasing amount of volume, which indicates a lack of conviction from sellers. Nevertheless, the XRP price has dropped significantly due to the lack of buy pressure. The RSI has dropped below the 50 point level and the momentum is clearly on the bearish side. You want it to be over 50 points to be somewhat bullish and not be into that bearish revert, you know, downturn. The daily MACD is about to go through a bearish crossover as long as the short-term downtrend continues. The histogram of moving averages are just a few days away from turning into the negative side. So this is very big. The bias, the current XRP bias is bearish and a retest of the critical support is very likely considering the current market conditions. Short term prediction for XRP price. XRP has failed to maintain its price from the most recent rally and it rakes weeks of gains. XRP was badly affected by the overall sentiment, which places it on a clear path back to the next critical support level at 75 cents. So there's a lot of stuff going on here with XRP. So before we go into the Bitcoin uh, reading, I want to go into the XRP chart real quick and then we'll go to Bitcoin. So XRP, what we're looking at is we're looking at this key resistance right now of 88 cents. They're saying 89 cents. I think 88, but you could, like I said, we can move it up to 88.9 to make it better. It's, it's basically at the 89 cents and that's the 30 minute time frame. It's still at the 88, whatever. So that's our resistance, key resistance. <clears throat> our key support is down here at 82 cents if we can hold this, but the only reason this is key support is because this is a mid hold spot where we could stop the sell pressure, right? Looks like we created some kind of inverted head and shoulders, but it looks like it's only gonna come up to somewhere in here or possibly retest here and then what? Then you start to build some nasty formations. This might not even do anything but create a hook. And it could create a hook to 75 and that's what we need to watch out for. Right? You know, that's something that we really need to watch out for. 
I'm going to have to grab something uh, in just a second. Somebody's uh, dropping off something for me, some groceries. So I'm going to have to grab the door just to let them know. So just so you guys know, so 82.4 support, 88.9 resistance. If we fall through 82, we got 75 cents. We fall through 75, it's 57. There's a 63 cent, 65 cent hold that is much like 82 cents. It's just a little drop. So I certainly could see us retesting that 75 cents very, very easily. Um, so this person just got here. So let's see. Let's pick this up for a second. So, but yeah, with XRP 75 cent support. And the key is if we don't pick up any volume, it's going to, it's going to be a very big negative impact to the downside. And it really is going to be a problem. We're trying to break out of this area and you want to get past the 200 day in the 30 minute time frame. That it's that simple. So the fact we're down here, we're going to have to reverse course with some volume. And the, the problem is, is we're not getting any volume. And it looks to me like we still want to go down farther. <coughs> Since we're on the chart, let's just look at XLM. XLM did the same thing as XRP, except on the chart, it's uh. Hold on one sec, I'm just gonna grab this, guys. I didn't know if you wanted me to come out or if you wanted to come out. Okay, sorry about that, guys. So, with XLM, it's 278 resistance, 264 support. But if we fall through 264, I'd say we're going to come down to that rounding bottom at 251 would be the safe play. But we did have the rounding bottom. You could say we hit the top end of the support instead of the or resistance area instead of the support where we were rounding the bottom. So that's what you want to watch out for XLM. The fact that the cup fell down through the, with the handle under 27.8 and is using it as resistance or is a terrible sign. It's terrible. You wanted to hold that 27.8 and we went over it yesterday late night. So that's what we're seeing there. Now let's read this uh, Bitcoin real quick and then get into the Bitcoin chart and then I will let you guys go. So let me just set this back up. Thank you for being patient. Bitcoin USD pressured below 50,000 again. Sally Ho's technical analysis, December 30th, 2021. Bitcoin encountered additional technical resistance early in today's Asian session as the pair remained pressured below the psychologically important 50,000 figure following this week's depreciation from the 52,100 level. Its strongest uh, spread, uh, print what the since early December. Stops were recently elected below the 50,535, 49,567, 48,784, 48,000, and 47,034, and the 46,888 areas during the pullback. These are important because these are the FIB levels, the 23.6, 38.2, 50, 61.8, 76.4, and 78.6 percent retracements of the recent appreciating range from 50 or 45,469, 32 to 52,100. I know this is a lot of numbers, but you need to hear this. This is how you can put everything in perspective. Buying pressure emerged around the 46,596.52 level following the pullback representing a test of the 23.6 retracement of the depreciating range from 49,459 to 45,469.32. Selling pressure commenced around the 59,114.84 level in recent weeks and many stops were elected below downside price objectives during the selling pressure including the 56,533, 56,880, 55,735, 54,295, 54,114, 53,748, 53,600. These are all selling pressure, guys. A lot of resistance out there. 53,046, 52,351, the 51,322, 51,171, 
50,185, 49,361, 47,400, 47,426, 44,971, and 44,667 levels. Following the pair's recent volatility, upside retracement levels and areas of potential technical resistance include 52,706 if we get there, 55,157, 55,526. Traders are observing that the 50 bar moving average four hourly is bearishly indicating below the 200 bar moving average four hourly <clears throat> and above the 100 bar moving average four hourly. Also, the 50 bar moving average hourly is bearish, indicating below the 100 bar moving average hourly and above the 200 bar moving average hourly. Everything looks bearish. Price activity is nearest the 100 bar moving average four hourly at 48,508, but on the bottom side of it, so that's going to be used as resistance. And the 50 bar moving average at 49,110. I'd be very surprised if it got there before further lower support test. Technical support is expected around 42,151.91 and 38,670 comes into play. 35,734 with stops expected below. So we're starting to get into the nitty gritty, ladies and gentlemen, because we're starting to reverse courses. And now we're using these very key support levels as resistance once and for all. Technical resistance, if we break out of this level, though, because there is the chance we can break up as well as we can break down. So I like to cover both sides. Technical resistance is expected around 53,046, 55,157.38, with stops expected above. On four hourly chart, slow K is bearishly below. Slow D, while MACD is bearishly below MACD average. On 60 minute chart, slow K is bearishly below. Slow D while MACD is bearishly below MACD average. So this is everything is signaling bearish. So be very, very cautious. Understand what we're looking at in the market. Tune out the FUD so we can understand the chart so you don't get rocked. So with Bitcoin, all I want you guys to look at is 47,183 is support. What we need to do to stay bullish. If we can't hold 47,183, it's not the end of the world. We're going to come out into my sweet spot, which is right there. And you can see how it's starting to line up now. We can take out this circle because this is what I drew yesterday was going to happen today. And it did. So now if this doesn't hold, we can bounce in here, right? We could do something like, pew, 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 right? And end up in here. That's the sweet spot to me. That right there, 46,276 is the sweet spot. And I'm not saying we're going to create an M. Don't get me wrong. I'm saying this could be a hook here too. I think this is a sweet spot here. If we're going to maintain any kind of um, semblance to stay outside of this trading range, which is the channel that I had before, for anybody who's new, I, we were trading in a channel, we broke outside of it, and that's why I'm the best in the business. Let's just face the facts. It bounced outside of my channel. We see exactly where it's going. When it first broke outside of it, we knew we were going to have a nice push up because it bounced on the top side of the resistance as support, and it bounced up to our resistance at 51.219. Now, we created an M. And we're coming down now. What we're looking at is to maintain a bullish narrative. We bounced off of that right now. Right? So <clears throat> we had a wick down. Now the question is, this looks like a bearish continuation pattern to the downside. It looks like we had a fake out down, but it's going to confirm it on a double bottom is what it looks like to me. And that would be the sweet spot. And then you could probably bounce up. But if you don't bounce up, and this is a very big if because we don't know if it's going to play true. Because I would say in this area right here, you're going to bounce up and at least retest something like this. And then it's going to be, do we fall back into this channel? If we don't bounce up and we just fall into this channel, now you're going to trade like this and then have a drop. That's exactly what would happen. And then you would get the push up, likely. If we had any kind of push off a double bottom. But when you fall through like this with an added topping reversal like that, there's no guarantee once you get in here, you come out and you might just go down to the bottom side. There is no guarantee you're coming out of it. But that's what I would expect if we flush down into there. Take this for what it's worth. I'm not a financial advisor. Should you take my advice? No. But you should take into consideration the articles I read and the technical analysis I give you because it's trust. It's trusted to the point. And I don't do it for bullshit. I do it so that you have one person on YouTube that you can come to and be like, holy shit, this guy makes sense and he's not after my bottom line.